Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here with Vinyl Fine 68, I believe. That's what I said. We're holding it right here. About right here, huh? Chi Chi High. It's hot in this mother. Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here with Vinyl Fine 68, I believe. Mother. Let me check that motherfucker. Motherfucker, that's some crooked shit, but it's alright. Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here with Vinyl Fines. I think it's 68. It's been about three weeks, four weeks since I've done a Vinyl Fines video. Cheers, Peroni to you. The last time I did a video in here, you could hear the crickets twerping. I don't think you can hear too many tw crickets twerping tonight. It's like 90 degrees outside and it's raining. I just got off the phone with my mom in Bakersfield and it's pouring up there and it's 111 degrees. Oh man, that's some weather, huh? Anyways, it's been a while since I've done a vinyl video. Vines video. Day, 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 day. I need another drink, dude. Um, now I have bought quite a bit of stuff. I probably have enough stuff for three videos. I normally on my video finds don't show more than seven albums or so because I tend to talk a lot of bullshit, I guess. But uh, I decided I'm going to break it up into two. I got, I have enough 60s stuff to show in one video. And I'm going to show that all in my next video. And all this is uh, enough for normally two videos for me. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on the clock. I have a clock over there. I can keep an eye because my stupid ass camera it shuts off after 12 minutes. So I'm going to get up in the middle of it. Guaranteed. But anyways, I have some really good albums. It's a good uh, cross section. And uh, the first one here is uh, La Luz. Fucking excellent band here. Um, I never heard of this band. I think they're from... I shouldn't say where. I, I think they're from Portland. Oh, I got a download card. But, uh... Yeah. I saw a video... And the thumbnail, it's of the bass player. And it's just, man, I had to click on it, man. She is gorgeous. But, yeah, it it's a video of them. And I'm going to leave a, a link to that video. They're playing on the coast. Northern California, maybe uh, Oregon. But, fantastic band. Um, all four musicians are great. The drummer, man, she is fantastic. And uh, I really, it's a new band. This album came out in 2013. They have a another album that has some hands on it. I, I'm going to pick that one up. But uh, after I saw that video, this is the one I saw. And I go, man, I'm going to get this. Really great stuff. I highly recommend this band. And check out... The, the video link that I'm going to leave. you I think a lot of people will be really surprised. And give it time. Let them play a, a song or two. Because man, do they ever get get into it. This is the inner sleeve. And it's probably black vinyl. But I'm going to show it. Because that's what Rich does. Pretty, pretty basic. Pretty basic Rich move there. For those that don't know, Rich is short for Richard, which is a polite way of saying dick. 
That's how I got the the nickname Richard. Anyways, next one here, a couple of 60s. I am going to show a couple of 60s here. Herbie Hancock, Speak Like a Child, and uh, on Blue Note. I, anybody that knows, I mean, I do like some jazz. I'm not a big jazz guy. I don't like free jazz. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. At least, I mean, I've, I've heard people say, oh, it's a hard listen. Come on, it's a hard listen. That's just like a PC way of saying it. It's a piece of shit. It's on Blue Note. Um, Miles Davis is my favorite. And Herbie Hancock is probably my second. I like John Coltrane, but I just I think Herbie Hancock's a really good songwriter and a really good album. And you might not be able to guess, but guess what? My next one is Miles. Miles Smiles, the classic. Uh, Second quintet of Miles, his 60s quintet, great album. This is uh, actually one of the first Miles albums that I ever owned. I think the first one I ever bought was, uh, might have been a twofer. Then it was on the corner maybe when it first came out and then I think maybe this one. But really good album and it's a uh, on the Columbia 2i really cool I dig uh, Miles now that La Luz that was a new album and this was a new album too most of these are used but this is Gigi Allen and the Jabbers 1980s rock and roll this is basically a comp. I wasn't, I was kind of leery of this. I bought this online. And, man, I am so glad I bought it. It's actually, they're one, two, three, four, five, six. They're first seven, uh, seven inches singles and EPs. And, man, it, this is, I thought there was going to be a lot of overlap. Because I do own the, his first album with the Jabbers. And the first three songs on the first single are the first three songs on their first album. But other than that, these are all different versions. And then this is a really good... This is uh, when Gigi Allen actually sang. Pretty cool album. And uh, I was... It's not pretty cool. I was really surprised. I, this is a great album, actually. A lot of people I know, they don't like Gigi. He's a dick. But we're all dicks sometimes, aren't we? And it's produced by Gigi Allen on Orange Records Limited. Probably some kind of, I mean, this is a, a new, new album. So this is probably a bootleg. But anyways, very good quality. Now, this next one <coughs> is a band I've never heard of. City Thrills. It's the type of music I wouldn't I would not normally buy this record. It's a ten inch and it's kinda I don't know, it's kinda new wavy, poppy. It was pressed on uh, red vinyl and uh Salem uh, Ground Zero is the one that showed this. And uh, what piqued my interest was uh, Merle Allen is in this band. That's the the older brother, G.G. Allen's older brother. And uh, Merle's this nerd right here. But uh, yeah, this is... Uh, in fact, Merle, he's the reason, or he, he's the one that gave Gigi, uh, Gigi's name. Gigi's father was a uh, pretty much a psycho 
um, he named Gigi Allen. Gigi Allen's uh, name on his birth certificate is Jesus Christ Allen. And his older brother Gigi could not pronounce Jesus Christ. And he referred to his little baby brother as Gigi. And the mom goes, yeah, Gigi, that's the name, yeah, you know. And then uh, she finally left the crazy sucker. And... Uh, Legally changed his name to I can't remember what. Rich. Now this next band here. There's two. There's a few uh, channels that I watch, and I kind of like get ideas. You know, some cool stuff to buy, like psych stuff. Dead Wax sixty six, the Hogs Ear Report. Nico Malcolm, Psych in the Valley, you know, there's channels like that out there, you know, that show some really cool Psych. In fact, Psych in the Valley, he just, he recently talked about, uh, the Arthur Brown, is it? The guy that sings Fire! And I never, I just kind of dismissed that guy, and he's got me, you know, looking for that album. When I see it, I'm going to pick it up. But anyways, there's a couple of new... BC members that show punk. As you know, I, I do like punk, but I, I'm not really, I don't really follow punk. It's been years since I followed punk. I quit going to gigs in the late 80s. I mean, I went to some sparingly in the late 80s, early 90s, and then I pretty much stopped altogether. And uh, I, I'll go to a gig once in a while, but it, it's, I mean, come on. You know, I'm 61 years old, you know. But, uh, I just saw Final uh, Conflict. They're playing in October, and I, I might go check them out, dude. That was the last local band or band that I really got into. But anyways, Salem Ground Zero, he mostly shows metal shit, but he does show some punk. And uh, this next band is one that he showed. And another guy, uh, Get Into It, Jason, I think his name is, Get Into It. I, he shows all punk, and he shows the shit that I like. And uh, he's going to be a great resource for me. Because I really don't know. Um, but, you know, my relatives from England, we weren't posh. And fuck was a noun, a verb, and an adjective, you know, so excuse me. Anyways, these next two albums are right up my alley. And these I found out about from uh, Get Into It, Jason. This first one is Smart Dads, Bummer Summer. What a fantastic band. This is from, they're from Texas. And it's on this label I've never heard of, Radio Rahim. I don't know if any of you remember Radio Rahim. He was a dude in, uh, God, that Spike Lee movie with the big ass uh, <laughs> ghetto blaster. And he went in there and he wanted 21 batteries. <laughs> but anyways, this is a Texas band. Fantastic. Uh, it's. I, I guess this is a. I don't know if it's a demo or whatever. I, I forget. I, I did read about it because uh, it does come with this really fantastic book. Smart dads. One dude I think is a little bit older than the other ones. That's pretty cool right there. Smart dads. <laughs> That's funny. That's a funny picture. And it's got pictures of the band in concert. Seems like it's all from one show. Flyers. But uh, yeah, really cool shit. This is the kind of stuff, I mean this is from the 80's. Smart Dads. Black vinyl, I'm not going to show it. 
excellent, excellent shit. And one more that he showed on the same label, Sorex. This is a band from the South Bay, I think. Redondo Beach, probably. I I, I didn't I was unaware of this band. Another 80s hardcore punk band. There were so many of them in LA at that time. But yeah, this is fantastic shit. And uh this I believe is their first single. And I guess they recorded enough material for an album, but it never they never released it, and that's what this is. Fantastic shit. And again, uh, really cool uh, booklet comes with it. Really cool. It's a really cool label. <coughs> radio Raheem. I mean, really cool radio. Really cool record label. It's got different shit. But yeah, I, I'm really... This is the kind of stuff I'm into, you know, 1980s stuff, demo shit, bands that never really got released, you know, bands I never heard of. I mean, that's what I'm really into. And it kind of reminds me of, let me take a walk over here. I don't know if this, here you go, here we go. This is an album here, Battered Citizens. And this is on Mind Cure Records. 1988 and this was a this is a right here is a, a picture of the cassette you know the demo and they they released they recently released three of their demos on vinyl and pick it up man get into it you'll, you'll dig those check out a uh, mind curb my mind curb records okay my next one here is Alex Chilton the Federalist Tarts. This came out in 1985. Now I did see Alex Chilton in concert. It might have been a little bit before this. And he was excellent in concert, dude. But uh, I, I didn't really I don't really like this. It's got horns and I don't know. I have to give it another listen, but I really didn't care for it. It's on big time records. Big time disappointment. Next one is a T Rex. What is this one? The Dandy in the Underworld, his last album. And um, I did. This is the only album I really didn't have by him. Although I, I can't find all my T Rex albums, but uh, yeah, this is like a special mid price, you know, budget release of it. Very cool. It's on. Relativity Records. I think I have a couple of those. But yeah, it's a really cool album. Very cool album. It's kind of kind of makes you think, you know, I wonder what he would have done, you know, if he wouldn't have got killed in that car crash. Probably would have faded out and been a has-been, but who knows. You know. Next one here. I remember I bought this when it first came out. Parliament. Clones of Funkenstein. In fact, uh, I think the first the first uh, Parliament album I ever bought was uh, Mothership Con Connection. This is the one that I, I'm pretty sure followed it because I remember buying this one after that one. And uh, not long after that, I remember seeing uh, Bootsy Collins live at the Forum. Fantastic concert, you know. I was probably the only white dude there, you know. But it, it was about the time when uh, Star Wars, the first Star Wars movie came out. And they were selling these lightsabers. And during the concert, you know, Bootsy's playing fantastic. And man, people, people are waving these lightsabers. And it was a sight I'll never forget. It was a fantastic concert. This is the inner sleeve. And it's on Casablanca. It's not as good as uh, Mothership Connection, but it is great. Now this album here, though, on the other hand. <coughs> see, I'm get, getting excited. I think this is Ohio Player's best album. Skin Tight. All the band members there. Now this band, 
this is the first band, this is the first album I ever heard of these guys. And it, to this day, it's still my favorite. I heard of this band, I probably shouldn't say it, in case my grandkids ever watch my videos, but uh, there was this hippie couple that I used to buy weed from, and they knew I liked jazz, and they knew I liked funk, and James Brown, and that, and they go, have you heard of this band? I go, no. And they played this album, and I go, fucking hey. I picked it up that, that same week, you know. Fantastic, man. Skin tight. Skin tight. Fuck yeah, man. That's some shit right there, dude. Highly recommend this. If you're into funk, you probably already know it. If if not, check this album out. Okay, the next two are punk rock classics, I guess. I don't know if they're classics. This is Black Flag Annihilate this week. It's a 12 inch. I never bought this because I just figured, you know, I already have the songs. But uh, it, it turns out these are live versions. So, you know, I didn't know that at the time. It came out in 1986. And uh, really cool shit. Annihilate this week is a really, really good song with uh, commercial potential. And there you go, Black Flag. As you all know, I love Black Flag. And this last one here is Misfits, 12 Hits from Hell. This originally, uh, this was recorded in 1980. It was never released. I guess the guitar player, they shit canned him. Re-recorded shit. And then uh, Misfits Walk Among Us, they re-recorded and came out in 81 or 82, was it? I think it came out in 82. But yeah, this has got some... Uh, uh, three songs of this came out on that. Uh, three Hits from Hell. And then the Halloween and the Halloween 2, the, the, the single. Those songs were released, but this is everything from those sessions. Really good quality. I had never heard this before. It was going to be released in 1990-something on Caroline Records. And uh, uh, Glenn Danzig and that other guy put a halt to it. But anyways, really cool. I highly re If you're a Misfits fan, you probably already know about it. If you don't, I highly recommend it. It's really good shit. Really good sounding shit. I mean, I do have some bootleg uh, Misfits bootlegs. and They don't all sound that great. This one's really good. Take care, guys and gals.